We're back at the Javits Center, theCUBE's coverage of MongoDB World 2022. The first live event in three years, pretty amazing. And I'm really excited to have Tony Coleman here as the CTO of Temenos, who changing the finance and banking industry, and Boris Bielek is the global head of industry solutions at MongoDB. Welcome back to theCUBE. Welcome, first time CUBE alum, so thanks for coming on. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Tony, tell us about Temenos. What are you guys up to disrupting the finance world? So Temenos is uh, everyone's banking platform. So we are a software company. We uh, have over 3,000 financial institutions around the world. Marketing tell me that that works out as over 1.2 billion people rely on Terminal software for their banking and financial needs. It's uh, 41 of the top 50 banks in the world run our software. And uh, we are very proud to be powering all of those entities on their innovation journeys and bringing, you know, that digital transformation that we've seen so much of over the past few years and enabling a lot of the world's unbanked through digital banking to become you know, part members of the banking community. So basically you're bringing the software platform to enable that so somebody doesn't have to, they don't have to build it themselves because they'd never get there. Absolutely. And, and so that's, I, I don't know if you consider that disruptive, I guess I, I, I do to the, to the industry to a certain extent, but when you think of disruption in that business you think of blockchain and crypto and NFT, is that a completely separate world or do you guys participate in that as well? It, well, I, I would say it's related, right? Yeah. I mean, NFT, I was, I was doing a podcast recently and they had this idea of um, uh, buzzword jail, where you could choose words to go into jail. And I said NFT, <laughs> not because I think NFTs are intrinsically bad, but I think just at the moment they are a rife for scam area. I think it's one of those one of those technologies and investment area that people don't understand it, and there's a lot of um, there's a lot of a lot of mistakes that can be made in that. Area. Icebergs ahead. Yeah, <laughs> I mean it's a, it's a, it's a fascinating piece, right? It could be truly transformative if we get it right, but it's very emerging. So so we'll see. So Temenos don't play a huge part in the blockchain industry directly. We work with partners in that space, but in terms of digital assets and that sort of thing, yeah, absolutely. So Boris, you have industry solutions in, yes. your, in your title. What, what does that entail? So basically I'm responsible for all the verticals and that includes great partners like Tony and Temenos. We're doing a lot of verticals by now in MongoDB when you listen to Dave in, in yeah. all his various talks. We have so much stuff ranging from banking, telco, retail, healthcare, insurance, you name it, we have it by now. And that's obviously yeah. the clients moving from these edge solution, like touching a little toe in the water about Mongo, to going all in, building bigger solutions. You saw on stage the lady from Wells Fargo this mm -hmm. morning. These are not second grade, yeah, we do something small now. We are part of their transformation journey, and this is where Tony and I come regularly together, how we transform things and how we build a new way of banking is done with microservices and the technology surrounding it. Yeah, but what about performance in this world? <laughs> what can you tell me about that? Well, yeah, <laughs> this, this, is, setup this is an interesting <laughs> thing because people are always challenging what is performance and document databases mm -hmm. and Tony challenged us actually six weeks before his own show several weeks ago in London and says, Boris, let's do a benchmark, and maybe Tony, you bring your story, because if I get too excited, I fall off the chair here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure, love. I mean, performance and efficiency of topics, close, close to my heart, have been for, for years. And so, yeah, we, um, every two or three years, we at Terminos run a high water, we call it a high water benchmark, and this year we sort of doubled down, literally doubled down on everything we did uh, previously. So this was uh, 200 million accounts, 100 million customers, and we were thrashing through 102,875 <laughs> transactions a second, second, which is a phenomenal number. And uh, how can I get do that in the blockchain? Uh, well, <laughs> touche. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. So this is you no. Know, some I get asked why we do such high numbers, and the, the reason is very straightforward. If somebody wants 10,000 transactions a second, and we're seeing banks now that need that sort of throughput, if I can give them a benchmark report that says 100,000, I don't need to keep doing benchmarks at 10. <laughs> yeah. yeah, okay. <laughs> Tell me more about 
the, any time you get into benchmarks, you want to understand the configuration, the workload. T tell me more about that. So we have a pretty well-trodden path of a standard transaction mix. We call it our retail transaction mix. And so it's the, it tries to, you know, the workload is there to mimic, because it's a simulation, right? around what you would do on your daily basis. So you're going to make payments, you're going to check your balances, you're going to see what, what money's moved on your account. So we do all of that and we run it through a proper production grade environment. And we feel this is really important. It's, this is not something we do in the lab. You couldn't go live on. This is all, you know, all of the horrible non-functional requirements around you know, high availability. Security, security passes, private links, all the things. And one thing is they're doing this for a long time. So this is not like, let's define something new for the Mongo world. No, this is something Tony's doing for literally 10, 15 years by now, right? If only it was only 15 years, but yeah. yes. And this is your benchmark, right? Yeah. Terminos is Temenos benchmark. Temenos developed yeah, this benchmark, yeah. okay. Yeah, and so we ran it through, and um, yeah, some fantastic numbers, and not just on the, the, the sheer sort of top level numbers, you know, 100,000 transactions a second. The response time out of Mongo was fantastic, uh, you know, one millisecond, which is just brilliant. So it means you get these really efficient numbers, and what that helped us do with you know, some of the other partners that were involved in the benchmark as well, it meant that our throughput per core, which is a really good measure of efficiency, is um, up to four times better than we ran it three years ago. So in terms of a sustainability piece, which is so important, that that's really a huge improvement. And that's down to yeah, application changes, architecture changes, as well as using you know, appropriate technology in the right places. How important were things like the number of cores, the memory sizes, the block sizes, all that stuff? We are very tiny, so this is the part when I talk to people, we have a, what we call M80 system in the back and people look at me, you run how many transactions on that one? So to be fair, uh, three quarters were MongoDB, one quarter was something else because we're still porting some components over on stored procedures, full disclosure. But when I think 75,000 transactions on a single, single M80 system, which is 32 cores, I think correctly, correct, something yeah. like that. This is a tiny machine in the world of banking. So before this was a mainframe, and now it's one little instance on AWS. And this is really the amazing part. Costs are down and environmental footprint is so, so important. And, and is a heavy, write heavy uh, environment? Or so the, mix? The, what was the, it like? The, the, way we, the way we architect the solution is it follows something called a CQRS pattern. So command, query, responsibility, segregation. So what we do, we do all the commands in an appropriate database for, for, for that piece. And that was running at about 25,000 transactions a second. And then we're streaming the data out of that directly into, into Mongo. So actually Mongo is doing more than the 75,000 queries a second, which is the read heavy part. Yeah. It was also ingesting 25,000 transactions a second at the same time. And, and okay, and the workload had a high locality, medium locality, it was, uh, I mean, just give us a picture of what that's like. Sorry, uh, so the, the locality? I, 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 yeah, mean, we don't have that. That's not so. A, yeah, so, so explain is, that. That's not. That's kind of not the mindset for a document database. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. In a document database, you ha you don't have this hot spotting, the one single field of a table which is suddenly hot spotting, and no, you have literally an and query comes up and we say what goes belong goes together, gets stored together, belongs together comes out together. So the number of IOPS, for example, is much, much smaller in a document system than a historically relational system. So it's, IOPS is not a good good indicator necessarily, not right? Not anymore. Yeah. That's why the size is so <laughs> much reduced. The number of access patterns is smaller. And I mean, Terminos is highly optimized for XML internally as well, the internal structures. So that goes very close to obviously. So traditional benchmark would have a cache in front, would have a high cache hit rate, well, so 199% cache, right? That's a high locality reference, but that's, that's irrelevant. It's, gone. it's gone. In, in this There's world. no caching yeah. in the middle anymore. It goes straight against the database. All these things are out. And that's what makes the thing so exciting. And all the thing in a real environment. I, I think, Tony, we really need to stress it, right? It's not a test bed at home. It's a real life environment out into the wild with the right benchmark drivers and load drivers. How did your customers you know, respond? You did this for your recent event? Yeah, yeah so we, we did it for our, for our user conference, our community forum, which was, as, as Boris said, uh, in a few, few weeks ago in London. Um, and the, you know, the reaction was certainly, a, a it was a great reception, of course, 
But the main thing that people were fascinated about how much more efficient the whole platform is. Explain so, that. So, you know, when we can run, and, and this, it's, it's, a, it's a great number that we, we managed, the team pulled out, which is so having doubled the throughput on the platform from what we did three years ago, we're actually using 20% less infrastructure to give double the performance. You know, at a macro level, that's a phenomenal achievement. And that means that these changes that we make, everything that we're doing benefits all of our customers. So all of the banks, when they take the latest releases, they get these benefits, everything is that much more efficient, so everybody benefits from every investment. And this was run in, in the cloud, is that correct? That's so correct, this is your, your yes. running Atlas? So this At was... Atlas, MAT, on AWS, with an AWS Kinesis, and Lambda processes, and, and, and. So it was a really reality-driven environment. So and pure, pure cloud native, all, all using managed services on AWS, and then Atlas for the, for the Mongo piece. It's awesome, I mean, uh, so now, <laughs> <laughs> How convenient for Mongo, the timing for Mongo uh, DB world. Uh, have, are you, how are you uh, uh, socializing this with your community? Yeah, we are having this afternoon a session as well where we talk a little bit more detail about that and Tony has a session as well tomorrow. So we see a lot of good feedback as well when we bring it up with clients. Obviously some clients get very specific because <laughs> this reduction in footprint is so huge when you think a client has eight, nine environments from early development systems to production to emergency standbys, maybe in a different cloud. All these things, what Dave talks about, the different Atlas features, multi-cloud, environmentally, all this stuff comes to play and this is why I'm so excited to work with him. We should bring up as well the other things which are available to ready already with your front-end solutions, with the Infinity services. Because that's the other part, the modernization, the microservices, which Tony is so politely not mentioning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a lot of cool technology into that one, which fits to how MongoDB works in microservices, API first, all these, what they call Mach factors, micro, microservice, API, cloud native, headless. I think that was the right order mm -hmm. now. So all these things are reflected as well by Terminos with their leadership, what they achieve now. I think a lot of companies have to play catch up now to what Tony and his team are delivering on the bank. Well, side. this gets to modernization, yeah. right? We yeah. really haven't explicitly talked about that, yes. everything you just said yeah. it talks to modernization. So you typically in financial services find a lot of relational database, right? The 20 year old, you know, hardened, et cetera. Um, high availability, give them credit to that, but a lot of times you'll see them just shift that into the cloud you guys chose not to do that, what, what was that modernization journey look like? So it's a bit of, um, I'm a, a firm believer in, in pragmatism and using, I think I've touched on earlier, the appropriate technologies. Mm -hmm. So Horses for courses. Horse, uh, exactly, <laughs> yeah. took the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> and I was talking to one of uh, the investor analysts earlier, and the, the, you know, the exact same question com comes up, right? So if you've got a relational database or you've got a big legacy system, and you know, you're stuck in a mainframe or whatever it is and you want to pull that over, when you, it's not just a case of moving the data model from one you know, paradigm to another, you need to look at it holistically mm -hmm. and you need to be ambitious. I think the industry has got you know, quite uh, nervous about some of these transformation projects but I, in some ways, although it might be counterintuitive, I think being ambitious and being bold is a better way, f better way through it. You know, take, take a view, look at it holistically, lay out a plan. It is hard. It is hard to do these sorts of transformations, but that's what makes it the challenge. That's what makes it fun. Take, take those bold steps, look at it holistically, look at an end state, and then work out a practical way you can deliver value to the business and to your customers as you deliver on that roadmap. So did you migrate from a, a traditional RDBMS to, to Mongo? <laughs> so, so, so yeah, this is a, a fun conversation. So, uh, of course, <laughs> in, the, in, in, <laughs> the, in the late 90s, um, the kind of the phrase document model hadn't really been coined yet. And for, for some of our workloads, we, uh, at the time we referred to it as a hierarchical model. Okay. Um, and you know, at that point in time, really, if you wanted to sell to a bank, you needed to be running on Oracle. So we took this data model and we got it running in Oracle and then other relational databases as well. But it, it actually, under the covers there, it is stored as, as XML. 
So there is a, a project that we're looking at to say, well, okay, taking that model, which is in a relational database, um, and of course you build over time, you do rely on some of the features of relational databases, and moving that over to something like Mongo isn't, you know, it's not quite as simple as just changing the, the data model. Um, so there's a few bits and pieces that we need to work through, but there is a, a proof of concept that we're running, which is looking really promising, and uh, spurred on by the amazing results from the benchmark, that could be something that's really interesting. Yeah, and I think, you know, 20 years ago, you probably wouldn't even thought about it, right? It was just too risky. But today, with the modern tools and the cloud, and you're talking about microservices and containers, it becomes p potentially more feasible. Well, the other uh, side of it is, you know, it's only relatively recently that Mongo has had transaction support across multi-document, multi-collection transactions. And in banking, as we all know, you know, it's highly regulated. It is all yeah, of your yeah, worst right. possible non-functional requirements, security, transactionality, atomicity, you know, the whole, the whole shebang. Your worst possible nightmare is Monday morning for us. Yeah, so. yeah. And, and I think one part which is exciting about this, Tony is a very good practical example about this large scale modernization and cutting out code base. By cutting off that layer and going back to the hierarchical internal structures, we are simplifying a lot of the backend components of our, because obviously code translation which was done before is not needed anymore. And that is as well for me an exciting example to see how long it takes, what it is. So Tony is basically my life experiment, so to speak. <laughs> well, you, Boris, you're right on because yeah. it used to be those migrations were how many lines of code, how long do I have to freeze it, and that a lot of times led people to say, well, forget it because yes. our business is going to can't and shut but, down but for But now a year. we do that. We do that, yeah. so I'm working obviously, besides the work with Temnos, with a lot of financial clients, and by now it's, my joke is normally shift and lift, pain and no gain. Because the result of the work is when they move everything to the cloud and it was bad before, it will not be better in the cloud only because it's in somebody else's data center. So these modernization and innovation factors are absolutely critical. And as Tony said, the people get it by now. This shift and lift is over. It is how can I innovate, how can I accelerate my innovation, and that leads very quickly to the document model discussion. Yeah, I think the, the world, the practitioners will tell you, if you really want to affect the operational model, have a meaningful impact on your business, yeah. you have to really modernize. You can't just lift and shift. Is that fair? Yeah. Absolutely. That? Yeah. I mean, Absolutely. that's, you know, it's the difference between you know, hundreds of millions or billions in some cases versus you know, some nice little hits here or there. So, and yeah. we see as well a lot of clients by now asking for solutions like the Terminal solution mm -hmm. and like others where there is not any more discussion about how to move to MongoDB, the question is how fast? Yeah. How can accelerate? We see the services request, the first one. It's amazing, after the event what we had in, in London, I have 100 clients calling us, so it's not our sales people calling upon the clients, the clients calling in, I saw it, how do I get started? And that is for me, from the vendor perspective, so to speak, an amazing moment. Love to sell for Mongo, <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> Guys, we've got to go, thanks so much for Thank sharing you your so story. Much. Thank you. Love to have you back and see how that goes, that, that migration. Happy that's to come a, back. That's a big story of, uh, if and when it, it happens. So, yeah, great. Thanks for having us. All right, us. keep it right there, everybody. We'll be right back. This is Dave Vellante for theCUBE. You're watching our live coverage of MongoDB World 2022 from New York City. <laughs>